McDonald, former Navy SEAL and author of Battle Ready, joins us once again. Hey, Mark, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Steve? Good, and it's great to, to hear your voice, uh, to hear your voice, because when you were sitting here next to me about a month ago or so, <laughs> you had lost your voice, and I, I give you all the credit in the world for coming in at that point, but welcome back. Well, thank you, and, and it's great to be able to talk to all the listeners out there. How's the, how's the book going? It's going well. The book is, is, is doing really well. In fact, I just got another email about five, six minutes ago from another veteran and, uh, and their family saying that it really helped them understand a lot of things and, and reach for help. I don't know if a lot of people uh, know this or not, but the, the, the gist of the book is really about um, the struggles that come about from war, and, and that's really what I want to say. It's not the sole thing about it, but it has been helping a lot of people. It definitely helped me. Right, and then you're talking about after after coming home from war, uh, that we should point out to people that the, the book is is a wonderful read, and, and, and the book, uh, Mark is a, a man who was a, a medic, a Navy SEAL medic, and uh, not only participated in, in, in you know raids and, and, uh, uh, and assignments uh, as a SEAL, but also had the medical bags and everything with them and treated those who were wounded and and had to be taken out and uh, just a, a, a real American hero he won't say it I'll say it and very 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 highly decorated uh, and he'll be the first to tell you he couldn't have done it without the rest of his folks but nonetheless uh, he deserved every decoration that he got and I want to ask you along those lines Mark before we talk a little bit more about the book as, as I had promised you we would one day um, yeah. the Department of Defense um, is it, making it very clear they oppose and the military opposes awarding Purple Hearts to the victims of the Fort Hood shooting. It was a, a Pentagon position paper yeah. that was given to congressional staff on Friday. ABC News got a hold of it today. And it says giving the award to the Fort Hood victims could irrecoverably, uh, ir irrecoverably, irrecoverably, I can't say the word, alter the fundamental character of this time-honored decoration. So in other words, it would diminish uh, the Purple Heart and undermine the prosecution of Major Nadal Hassan, um, who's on trial for, uh, for shooting uh, all those people in Fort Hood. So, um, and and, and uh, compromise his ability to have a fair trial. Let's take the first one first. And, and how on earth could this uh, irre irrecoverable... See, I thought I could slip it in. I just for right now can't say the word. I will not say the word. How could this tarnish in any way uh, what the Purple Heart is all about? Well, first off, I'd like to say this. Um, the Americans that are out there listening and all the other listeners that are on uh, foreign soil that, that enjoy your show, um, you can be a patriot. Uh, you can support America's wounded, America's service members. You can support the military of the Purple Heart and still have differing opinions on this issue. So it, it, it's healthy to have those different opinions. Um, I, I, I can tell you I don't see personally how – this is just me speaking – I don't see how awarding it to these uh, brave men and women, the 32 survivors, and I believe there were 12 soldiers that were killed, um, is going to cause any diminish in the medal. I understand the government's position um, is based on service members who were killed or wounded um, in, against an enemy or against an international terrorist attack. And, and, I, and I, I respect their position on that. I have a differing view of that than many, of, many others that I talk with that are also Purple Heart recipients in that I do recognize this. I do see this as an international terrorist attack. Um, I think there's more than enough evidence that show that Major Nadal Hassan um, had strong ties with terrorist activities and was prepped, uh, recruited and prepped accordingly in order to do this attack. So when you look at it from that light, or at least when I look at it from that light, I see that the people that were involved in the shooting um, were victims, yes, but they were victims because they were soldiers, and their serving their country as a soldier put them under fire. And I believe there's witness statements, multiple witness statements, that say that Mr. Hassan, or uh, Major Hassan, utilized his tract utilize his experience of knowing the difference between military members and civilian members and tracked and specifically hunted out military members. 
Yeah, no, a absolutely. And, and and there was extensive evidence that Hassan was in communication with uh, Anwar al-Awlaki uh, yeah. prior to the attack. He uh, reportedly shouted Allah Akbar. Um, he had given you know speeches that were ignored and ramblings that were ignored because nobody wanted to single out a, a Muslim American in, in uniform. Uh, but but in my view, uh, what's irrevocably see I did you learn got it. it there. Yes, irrevocably ru uh, ruined is uh, is the Defense Department and and uh, military's reputation. For, for not doing right by these uh, these men and women. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is, it was 13 people killed and 32 uh, wounded back on November 5th of 2009. And, um, you know, uh, th there's uh, th they classified this as a workplace violence shooting. So to the military, to the administration, to the Department of Defense, this was the same as a postal worker just going crazy for no reason and shooting uh, people in the post office. And, and that, is, that is a blatant, I, I don't see how anybody could, could compare the two and say that these men and women, these soldiers were not gunned down in a terrorist attack on our soil. Well, I, if I remember the incident correctly, when it, first, when it was first reported, uh, the government did come out with their position regarding the Purple Heart quite early, which kind of lends to question how much of an open mind did they have going into this. I, and I understand the, the, the Purple Heart and the history of it, and, and it's, you know, change in World War II, and then it's, it's retroactive to World War I for, for people being wounded under fire. I, I get that. I understand that. Trust me, I know that very, very well. It's very, very ingrained in me, and, and I have the greatest respect for that. But you know, just as warfare modifies and changes, so does some, you know, changes need to be made to the way that we recognize the enemy's modus operandi. And in this case, it seems that if we look at it from a logical sense, this man was recruited, this man was trained, or this man was maybe not specifically trained by someone uh, within uh, the Al-Qaeda network, but he was definitely recruited and definitely given direction in order to do this attack. Therefore, it makes him a terrorist. Now, a couple questions that I think need to be addressed is, how are we going to, how are we going to define traitors? Are we going to define traitors as just being someone that do uh, domestic, or are we defining, defining traitors that, as being international? And, and that's, pretty, that's pretty important, because the Purple Heart itself is given for an international terrorist. Well, a traitor's a traitor, and he was a traitor in, in, in uniform, which makes it even worse, right. and, and a traitor in a medical facility, which just makes it un, in, in, intolerable to me. I right. cannot believe well, someone from the medical community, and then do it in a medical community, would do this. He, he's probably the most tra treacherous that you could be. Uh, that's that seems like it would fall into that category. A absolutely. A and Mark, one other thing uh, before we move on, and we're talking to Mark Donald, former SEAL um, and author of Battle Ready, um, here on the Steve Malzberg show. Uh, you know, there's there, there's um, a method to the madness here on the part of the victims. I mean, the Purple Heart certainly has a, and represents a lot, but also uh, cl having this classified as workplace violence and not giving them the Purple Heart, there's a lot of benefits. There's a lot of compensation. There's a lot of medical bills uh, that, that uh, won't be paid to these victims who are surviving, and uh, that's a big part of this. Absolutely. A absolutely. I, I think the, the VA health care is going to be the greatest asset to a lot of these soldiers that are unable to finish their career and have the opportunity to receive the health care benefits that they would have received otherwise. Um, so in, in that instance, it's, there's clearly a defining line between uh, what this medal represents and for those lives. And we have to remember they are the victims. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, let's move on. Let's talk a little bit more. I mean, this, you know, you, you probably could relate to, to, uh, to, um, uh, to what these victims are going through or probably have at least good advice for what these, uh, when these victims well, are going through. Because, but although these are from probably mostly physical injuries, there's still a, a great mental aspect to it as well. Well, there's definitely. As first of all, you're, they're walking into an area that they feel is going to be a safe area. I mean, it's the base, it's the medical clinic. That that's one thing that's going to add into their anxieties that are building up on them too. That you know, I, I no matter what the outcome is, and as I as I started my comments, you can have differing views, but I almost wholeheartedly believe that every single one of them feel they deserve, and, and those that have passed their families feel they deserve a Purple Heart. So there's probably some feeling of somewhat of abandonment um, 
in, in that that's going to add to that anxiety or add to that angst, that mental anguish they're going through. And plus, they have to re, they have to relive this not only because it's just a natural. Uh, indelible mark that's in their mind, but they have to relive it because they're going to go to court because they've been preparing for this. They've been making statements. And in that process, they're all trying to put it together on what's going on. So it's actually probably deepening those memories that they're having. Yeah, and and all this kind of stuff, well, it, it's it's all addressed in the book. The book is so comprehensive, and uh, the, the, I mean, you you have to be so proud of what you did uh, in uniform. But certainly, writing about it in the manner in which you did, and making it a almost a a, a guide as well of as a, as a story for people who who need help and need somewhere to look and somewhere to turn. That's got to make you real uh, feel pretty good. It's, it does. It's it's a little scary when you write out something like that and you put your memoir and 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 how you feel and what you went through out to the public. Um, it, it it opens up a lot of doors of uh, uh, into the, you know the internal part that you hide behind. Um, and it, it took probably just as much courage to to go ahead and release that and, and let the public read what I was going through. Um, as, as it did to actually be in combat. I know that may sound inimaginable some, but it's, it, it's, it's actually pretty terrifying when you, when you have to, to be honest with the world. No, I, I, I could imagine. And again, the book, folks, is um, Battle Ready uh, by uh, Mark Donald. And Mark, we'll call on you again, sir, and thank you for your time. And I'm glad you're feeling better, and we'll speak to you soon. Well, thank you for bringing this topic up with the American people. This is an important one. We need to think about it. If we are going to call this a war on terror, if this is a war on terror, then that comes with everything else with that term. Well, better keep saying it while we're still allowed to. Uh, Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Uh, Mark uh, Donald, ladies and gentlemen, here on the Steve Malsberg Show.